This is the Ashaway Powerkill 115ZX. Now I've spent longer testing this racket than I do most of the others. Even though the string pattern's got the paint on it, it doesn't look like I have, I have. And I did it for a reason. I did it because I was looking for a weakness. I wanted to be able to balance the review by saying, this racket is fantastic for these things, it's great for this, but, but, I couldn't really find a weakness, and that's really maybe one of its strengths, that there's literally no weaknesses in this racket. So if you're interested in learning more about the racket, let's get started. Let's start with the text and specs. Well, obviously it is advertised as 115 grams. It's in the name. But let's be clear, that's with no grommet strip, no strings, no grommets down the side, probably even no grip and maybe no plastic. But don't worry, because that's industry standard. They weigh the rackets as minimum as possible so you have a consistent guide. Now once I put my over grip on top, it weighed, uh, sorry, let's start with the without the grip. As supplied, it weighs 140 grams, which is pretty light, I can't complain about that. Once I put my grip on top, it weighed 150 grams. And it is, there's always a variation between rackets because the grip length is slightly different and you use a different amount of grip. Now, the advertised balance point is 365. As supplied, the balance is, I measured, 372. Now, that's the red piece of tape. Obviously, it's my finger, so it's not really gonna work exactly. Uh, 372. The yellow uh, piece of uh, tape is with the grip on top. Of course, when there's a, a grip, the weight moves further down. And this one, uh, this then went to 355. Now, both of those uh, are head heavy or slightly head heavy. Uh, and that's how Ashaway advertise it. They're not um, advertising it as an uh, evenly balanced racket or even a headlight racket. They're advertising it as a head, slightly head heavy, sorry, I need to emphasize that, slightly head heavy racket. It's made with graphite. Couldn't really find out too much about the uh, actual technical specifications of the graphite. And that's fine because manufacturers don't want to tell you everything. And the, um, Frame size for string size is 490 grams, so it's pretty big. Moving on to visuals. Well, it comes in a um, green, black, and white color scheme, which you can see. I think it's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. It's very uh, distinctive. I, I do believe it comes in a, another colorway as well, but it depends on the region where you're buying it. One thing I do want to talk about uh, from the visual point of view, but it is probably more to do with the technical aspect, is the attention to detail on the frame shape. It's not just one smooth area. There's this little ridge, and I'm sure that that has something to do with the way it maintains its rigidity rigidity and there's also the way that the frame uh, ends in the open throat area here it's not just a very smooth it's got this little uh, raised recess the oops, the uh, frame, is, frame itself is concave uh, whereas we've seen lots of convex um, designs recently, but this is a concave. It doesn't feel too bulky, it doesn't look too bulky. It feels quite slim, even though if we were to measure it, it's actually maybe a little bit wider. Power. This has been described as an open throw racket. It is not an open throw racket. It is a throatless racket. A open throw racket is one that has a throat with a hole in it. It is open because there were closed throated rackets. Anyway, let's call this a teardrop. That's maybe the best way to describe it. Teardrops inherently have power. They have power because they have the longer strings. And talking of strings, this is strung with a 14 by 18 string pattern. It comes with the Supernic ZX Micro, but of course you could change it, but you'd be crazy to change it until you've broken the string. My Ashaway strings are fantastic. I ha absolutely love them. This one has uh, is obviously a little bit thinner, I personally prefer slightly thicker strings, but it's called the Micro for a reason, 115 uh, millimeters. So if you like thinner strings, then this is perfect for you. Comes in a, a, a black. It's strung a little bit tighter than, again, I like things, uh, but over time, that will loosen, and then when the time comes for you to restring, you can uh, string at any uh, tension you want. But that's true of all rackets. All right, so power. Yes, of course you can hit the ball hard. Um, I had no problem. Uh, once I'd warmed up, once I'd 
got the ball warm, I had no problem smacking this ball, even breaking one on the, in the process. So if you're a power player, you are gonna have no problems. Follies, yep, I played lots of volleys with this. Of course you can volley, you can volley with everything. The point I'm trying to make is that uh, the slightly head heavy balance always helps volleying once you've got your racket in position. It might take a little bit longer for you to get there, but once you'll get there, you've got the momentum in the head which is giving you power on the volley. It means that you have maybe less racket swing to do, so you can take volleys earlier than you would normally do. Lots of uh, ability to control the ball, kept the ball really, really tight. Notice that that was one aspect that I really enjoyed with this racket, kept the ball really tight. And while we're talking about tight, let's talk about the top string control. That's one thing that I really like to focus on. I, I played specifically by hitting the ball sort of in the middle of the court, hitting the ball on the top string to see how it goes, and I had no problems with this. And that's a really important feature because if you're hitting the ball tight, you need to be able to keep the ball tight again and this racket has that so as i mentioned into the introduction it does everything really well so i'm almost struggling to find things to say about each thing because everything is done really well forgivability as i just previously mentioned about hitting the ball at the top area hit the ball or try to hit the ball in all the areas and i had no problems especially on the sides often you find that when a racket uh when you use a racket if you go outside the sweet spot area then what you tend to find is that there's a like a twist um the stronger your forearm the less twist there is but rackets exaggerate that and this was this was great and this is going to be one of the main features of who it's suitable for later on uh, and don't think that that means beginners because it doesn't mean that um this racket has the ability to play really nice sweet uh, shots all over the all over the uh, racket. It has maybe a smaller sweet spot than you might expect, meaning that when the ball is hit in perfectly the right place, it feels fantastic. But it feels quite nice all the way around. Maneuverability is the measure of how easy a racket is to move around just using your forearm and your wrist. I found the 115ZX to be easy enough to maneuver that I don't feel that I would have any trouble with unexpected shots in a match and as you can see here my reaction volleys were pretty consistent. Generally, head heavier rackets feel like they're harder work than head light rackets in this type of situation. But the opposite side of the coin is that you get a little bit more momentum in those volleys so those shots feel solid if you can manipulate the racket quickly enough. I'd like to take a little interlude from this racket review and talk about a website that I recently built. It is called discoversquash.com and my main idea was to allow people to go to the website click a button and be taken to a random squash website. But then I realized that the list of links that I use for that randomization could be more useful if they were searchable and orderable. So that's what I added to version two. So you can see here that I currently have 118 links. And by the time you watch this video, that may have increased significantly. Now, there is a video available on the site which shows you how to use the search facility and the ordering facility. But but this is just really to show you the website itself. So this is where you start, you've got the menu at the top, you click here and it jumps you to the random uh, button or you can click the links and it takes you to the links. There's more about the website here and uh, if you want to add your own website you can email me there. Uh, link is here, squash, squashcoachphilip at gmail.com and then there's a link to my other projects. So anyway, that was the interlude. I just wanted you to tell, tell you all about it and let me know if you find that particular website useful. Right, let's get back to the review. Touch. Yep, you can cut the ball into the corners. You can play soft little volleys, you can play counter drops, you can do all sorts of shots with this and you're always feeling 
as though you're in control of the ball. You get a response. The racket tells you exactly what it's doing and it's consistent in that aspect. You don't get some shots that bounce uh, very fast or move very fast, other shots that don't. It is a consistent racket. And once you get the feel of that, once you know how much you need to swing and block and hit, you'll be able to control, control the ball consistently well. So again, nothing to complain about when it comes to touch. Corners. Actually, this is probably its best feature. Now, I don't normally worry about too much about the back corners because hopefully I've got a good enough swing, but I noticed that this let me get balls out of the back corner. It could be to do with the fact that it's slightly head heavy. So once you do get the racket behind the ball, it's got a little bit more extra momentum. So as far as picking out one particular thing that it did really well, I would say the back corners. So if you're struggling with the back corners, you're used to a even balance or slightly head heavy and you're looking for a new racket, then this could be perfect for you because it really did. And, I, and when I'm doing these tests, if I notice something that seems really unusual or special, the first thing I do is I go and get another racket and I do the same shot and I see whether it's me on the day, wow, I'm really hitting the ball out of the corner as well, or whether it's the racket and it was the racket. Sometimes it's me and then I have to re uh, reevaluate what I'm going to say about a racket, but in this case it was. It was definitely the racket. I got the ball out of the corner better with this racket. Right, what was its weakness? Well, its weakness is in the name, the kill. I did not ever feel comfortable killing the ball hard. Touching into the corner, soft little drop shots, medium speed, absolutely. But when I had to hit the ball high and I had to smack a really heavy slice into the nick, I didn't feel comfortable with this. Now it could be because it's head heavy, could be because it's strung tighter than I like it, and I just didn't have enough time. But for me, that would have been its weakness. But I want to you know, add to this, I'm not saying it can't do that, I'm saying that I never got comfortable with it. I did hit some nicks, I did hit some rollers, um, but I never felt as though I was really, really comfortable with it. But Ben Coleman and very recently Allerton Waters uh, both use this racket. Now they are professionals and they won't play with a racket that they can't kill the ball with. So it might be me or it might be my the combination between me and the racket because that's always quite important. You can find a racket that professionals play with uh, and they play with it for a particular reason but then you play with it and it doesn't have that feature or ability. So it's clearly a, a fantastic racket. You wouldn't get two professionals playing with it unless it was. Uh, so if I had to say a weakness, I would probably say the ability to hit the ball very hard with a lot of slice and kill it from the middle of the court. So who is it suitable for? Well, here is the interesting thing. It's suitable for you. And you'd, you'd be like, but Philip, how do you know who I am? Well, I don't, because that's the point. It is freaking awesomely suitable for everybody. As I mentioned in the introduction, I couldn't really find a fault that I could say, this racket doesn't do this. I mentioned that I don't feel that I felt comfortable killing the ball with it, but you can kill it. This is the kind of racket this is the first racket in a long, long time where if somebody said, what racket should I start with? I'd, I'd, I'd literally say this. I don't want to get into the argument about whether beginners or improvers should be using head light or head heavy or medium racket. Um, all that matters is that when I played with this, it, done, it did everything really well. 
other rackets do other things better. I'm not saying it's the best racket I've ever played with, but it does get the ball out of the corners really well, perhaps better than any racket that I've tested recently, but it is not my favorite racket. That is still the 110 SL. I like throated rackets. It's strung, uh, loose attention, definitely still my favorite racket at the time of recording this. But this racket is literally suitable for everybody. I would be so surprised if anybody say, oh yeah, I tested this and I really didn't like it. Maybe you don't love it, but you'll probably like it. So this is a great racket for beginners, improvers, club players, advanced players, professionals play with it. So rip up. So everybody's going to be able to be able to play with it. And I don't think it matters whether you're a man, a woman, young or old, strong or weak, this racket is gonna be really helpful for you. So hopefully this review is useful. Um, if it is, leave a uh, comment in the uh, comment section. If you've got one, and there's something that you like or you don't like about it, put it in the comment section as well because that's always helpful for other viewers. And that's it. I hope that you've enjoyed this room review and I hope that you get a chance. And if you live in the Basque Country, which is where I live, and you want to test this racket, message me and we'll organize that because I'm doing that with all of the rackets that I've been testing. Anybody who lives near me can test them at any time. That's it. Thanks for watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya. If you think the content on my channel is worth it, please subscribe. Help me reach 20,000 subscribers by the end of 2019. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you get informed when I release a new video. This is a video that YouTube thinks is a really good fit for you, and this is a collection of solo practice routines. Remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya!